10 seconds out. Stand by, up in three, two, one, and we are up, open in. Ring Q. Columbia police are still looking for suspects after a home invasion in, and abduction in South Columbia. Good Duels evening, in. I'm Warren Langell. And I'm Jim Rick. Thanks Duels for joining out. us. It all happened on Apple Tree Court early yesterday morning. Police say three to five masked men broke Please. into a home Stand with a man, four. a woman, and a 13-year-old inside. Reports say the men demanded money, and when they didn't find any, they forced the man into the trunk of a car. The man was able to escape from the trunk near Broadway and West Boulevard. Police found the man injured. Officers say the woman and the 13-year-old were not hurt, but the car stand is missing, four. and the men are still on the run. Q4, Anyone with six. information should call Columbia Police or Crime Stoppers at 875-TIPS. And six. This morning, Boone County Sheriff's deputies arrested stand a Columbia man after he led them on a vehicle chase yesterday. Graphics, a deputy five. tried to stop the 23-year-old Joshua Harrington because he had an active warrant out for his arrest. But Harrington sped away when he was stopped. The deputy followed Harrington until the high speeds and dangerous driving forced the deputy to stop. Deputies arrested Harrington at his home this morning without incident. He's been charged with resisting arrest, leaving the scene of an accident, and operating a vehicle in a careless manner. M5, standby package. Tensions are running high in Ferguson package just runs outside St. Louis, where a teenager was shot and killed by police. Witnesses say 18-year-old Michael Brown was unarmed and the shooting was unprovoked. Now officers are asking uh, for calm in the neighborhood. Okay. Corey Stark reports. And package. He wasn't causing any harm to nobody. Uh, we super. had no weapons on us at all. Dorian Johnson says he was walking home from a convenience store with his friend Mike Brown. They were walking on the street when a Ferguson police officer from his vehicle told the boys to get out of the street. Johnson says they kept walking, causing the officer to confront the boys, first from his car, then got out of the car, firing a shot. Johnson says him and Brown were scared and ran away from the officer. He shot again, and once my friend felt that shot, he turned Super around and put his hands in the earth, out. and he started to get down, but the officer still approached with his weapon drawn, and he fired several more shots. No, no justice, no, no peace! Instantly, no hundreds justice. gathered, angered and saddened by what they call a complete overreaction by the officer. Now a family is demanding answers. You took my son oh, away from me. You know how hard Super it was for me to get him to stay in Super school and graduate. Out. You know how many black men graduate? Not many. Because you bring them down to this type of level where they feel like I don't got nothing to live for anyway. They're going to try to take me out anyway. The crowd became more angered. Even someone firing shots. No one was hurt. Meanwhile, Brown's body laid in the street for hours. The shots that were being fired Super were very in. close to that scene. So Ow. we needed to make sure that the crime scene was safe. That's why we called for the additional About 20 more seconds so remaining in this package. Safely without conflict, move everyone back far enough. Ferguson Police Chief Tom Jackson says the St. Louis County Police Department is handling the investigation into the officer shooting and says as standard procedure, the officer has been put on paid administrative leave. We do Same want this six. investigated fully, and that's why we asked for the outside help to do that. And six. Stand by Esther four. Haywood, the president of the NAACP in St. Louis County, said today the organization plans to do everything within its power to ensure the police release all de details in the incident. The U.S. Justice Department says they're also monitoring the case. And Q4, stand by Back in Columbia, the Mizzou football season kicks off in 20 days. Today, fans got a taste of the action after playing in the SEC championship game last year. The Tiger fans came out in black and gold to meet the players. As Mizzou hosted its 12th annual Fan Appreciation Day, players and coaches met and signed Blue autographs Super, for about an four. hour and a half with Tiger fans. The doors opened at 3 p.m., a half hour earlier than expected because of the threat of stormy weather. Fans also had the chance to buy single and season game tickets. KOMU spoke to former defensive end Steve Erickson, who said he and his family made the trip from Kansas City Ten to seconds see of video players. Left. He's excited about the stadium improvements Nine, eight, seven, and to six, meet fellow Tigers. Five, the season kicks off Q4. August 30th that against black. South Dakota State. To buy tickets, you can visit our website, KOMU.com. 
Despite the rain, fairgoers still made Same their way into Sedalia today to celebrate the Missouri State Fair's Military Appreciation Day. Events of the day included Videos veterans in. keynote speakers and a special Same ceremony side. honoring veterans. A hundred motorcyclists representing the Patriot Guard riders were in attendance. Some fairgoers say they saw an increased amount of veterans at the fair. A mobile vet center was also available to veterans to provide outreach and counseling. And ten we've, that's it. We've, uh, we've impacted about a hundred veterans. Uh, that we uh, can contact later, and about probably 300 veterans just needing a services request. Stand by six, Q6. Admission was Stand free to four. all veterans. This is the fifth year the Missouri State Fair held Military Appreciation Day. And Q4. Gunman fired into Stand a car six. at a Kansas City intersection, killing one person and wounding two others this morning. The triple shooting occurred in the Crossroads District. Two cars pulled side by side. That's when the shooting began. One of the victims died during surgery, another was in serious condition, and the third suffered a minor wound. And six. School districts in southeast Missouri have been working with law enforcement agencies next. to ensure teachers are prepared for possible violence. Teachers in Kate Girardeau, Jackson, and Perryville have undergone active shooter training to help them respond appropriately if a shooting occurs. On-site police officers also help enhance school security. Jackson schools have coordinated with Kate Girardeau County to install emergency response buttons at schools, which triggers an automated announcement Stand for authorities five. to be dispatched. And Q5. Missourians find that life is just fine living down under, the ground that is. Earth homes are emerging as a popular housing choice for a green lifestyle. St. Clair, Jefferson and Franklin counties are reporting underground homes are becoming more common. And six. Stand it may four. be hard to stay inside this week. Let's check in with meteorologist Rosie Newberry for a look at the weather coming our way. Q4. Thank you, Lauren. We've had a few spotty showers throughout mid-Missouri today. A few of them were on the stronger side, but most of us just looking at mostly cloudy skies throughout the course of the afternoon. That's what's going to hang around graphic, tonight. Check out what's been going on in the last 12 hours here on our satellite and radar composite. You can see where those storms kind of bloom right there at the end of that loop and sweep to the south before they start to uh, dissipate. And honestly, we're looking at decreased rain chances throughout the rest of tonight, though they will hang around just a little bit longer. Maybe another Another spot here in mid-Missouri could get one tiny spot shower before we totally lose chances for the rest of a good portion of the week. Temperatures right now a few degrees warmer than we'll be when we wake up on Monday morning. We'll be back into the upper 60s. Checking out your precipitation for this week, it's kind of bookends. A little bit of precip to start the week, a little bit uh, possible to end it. And then also looking at temperatures for this time of the year, unbelievably mild. We've got a lot to discuss in, in the full eight-day forecast. Give you all the latest details coming up. Q5. Rosie, thanks. NASCAR fans in New York today enjoyed the cheese at 355. But Just one driver video. did not partake in the event after a devastating crash. Stay tuned. Break is in. Five out, stand by. Up, Q, Jim. NASCAR driver Tony Stewart did not drive in today's race. This after he hit and killed another driver Coming, while racing next, on a dirt track last the night in runs. upstate New York. Scott Thompson reports. Package in. Tony will not drive today. Three-time NASCAR champion Tony Stewart is pulling out of today's Cheez-It 355 NASCAR race. Last night, the driver hit and killed Kevin Ward Jr. while competing in a 25-lap dirt track race at Canandaigua Motorsports Park in upstate New York. This amateur video shows Ward's sprint car hitting a wall during lap 14 after apparently being cut off by Tony Stewart's car. Ward then exits his car and walks along the track. Ward, gesturing with his hands, appears angry and a car swerves to miss him. Tony Stewart's car comes close to Ward and appears to hit him. The operator of the car Super that was in. stuck was Out. transported to Thompson Hospital in Canandaigua by ambulance. At the hospital, the operator was pronounced uh, dead on arrival. Tony Stewart released the following statement via NASCAR's Twitter account today. There aren't words to describe the sadness I feel about the accident that took the life of Kevin Ward Jr. It's a Package very emotional time for all seconds. involved, and it is a reason I've decided not to participate in today's race at Watkins Glen. My thoughts and prayers are with his family, friends, and everyone affected by this tragedy. Police say Stewart is cooperating with the investigation and that no charges have been filed. Ten seconds. I want to make it very clear there are no criminal charges pending at this time. This is an ongoing investigation. 
I'm Scott Thompson reporting. And Q5. Cars were traveling slower than normal at the time Kevin Ward was hit. The race was under a yellow caution flag. Ward was in his fifth season. Reagan Smith replaced Stewart in today's NASCAR race at Watkins Glen. And Q Rosie. A very tiny chance for showers exists as we head into Monday morning. Patchy fog might be on tap Somebody as well. We're talking about a lot of good news in your forecast, including when rain chances come back and some really gorgeous temperatures for this time of the year. Make sure you stay right where you are. I'll have the full details coming up in just a few minutes. Q Sports Tees. The PGA Championship came down to the final hole. Later in Sports Extra, see how one star shines brighter in a dark out. night sky. Thirty-three seconds light. Thirty-three seconds light on the floor. Five seconds, stand by. Up, Q Rosie. Welcome back, everyone. Certainly hope you've had a wonderful weekend. We do have a nice big cool down on the way. We actually were a bit cooler today than expected. Highs only at the 80 degree mark just because of the amount of cloud cover sticking around mid Missouri. Things are going to change. The cloud cover will go away and we'll bring the sun back out but the temperatures will stay cool. So let's talk about it. Jet stream, kind of looking at the uh, upper level winds of our atmosphere, gives us a really good idea as to where we're going to see chances of rain pop up and when we're going to see temperatures go up or down. And it looks like after tonight, we're going to be bringing in some of that cooler Canadian air, and it's really going to hit its peak by the time we head to Tuesday. You'll see it here on our uh, Live Doppler 8 First Alert 8-day forecast, but Tuesday, coolest day of the week, highs could potentially only be into the upper 70s. Fantastic for this time of the year. Even even as we head into Wednesday and Thursday, we kind of see that this entire system moderates just a little bit. These uh, lines stay down, so we are still accessing some cooler air, uh, but we will slowly start to see those temperatures creep back up as we head closer to this next weekend. But we also need to talk about rain chances Thank because you. that's going to be a big portion of our forecast ahead. We're kind of looking at bookends here. Chances of rain existed today and they'll exist uh, a little bit as we head into Monday morning, and then they'll kind of filter their way back in as we head into the end of the work week and the start of this next weekend. So you can see this precip cast kind of already overdoing some spotty shower activity tonight. Most of that should be coming to an end in just the next few hours. Might get lucky enough to see one more spot shower here across the middle of mid-Missouri, but by the time we head to about 2 or 3 a.m., we're really just going to be looking at mostly cloudy skies. Now heading into Monday, what's going to be interesting is that we'll have a mix of sunshine and clouds you can see here throughout the course of the day, and even as we head into the afternoon hours, it looks like spotty shower activity kind of redevelops and this is something we continue to see almost each and every day is that we have all the ingredients in the atmosphere but to get any of these spot showers we'd be really really lucky so I'm hoping for it of course we need to make up a little bit in, as far as rain is concerned but I would say our best chance of rain is coming in the next few hours and then after that we're just going to be looking at kind of a mix of sunshine and clouds I also want to talk about dew points for just a second because you can see across the state they're for the most part into the upper 60s, a few lower 70s. Overnight temperatures tonight, as you'll notice, we're predicting back down into the upper 60s. Once we get dew point matching our actual air temperature, we've got ground fog. So patchy fog may be a possibility as you're heading into your Monday morning. Keep that in mind for the Monday morning commute. Might make visibility just a little bit more difficult. Chances of rain coming to an end really our best shot in the next few hours. Northwesterly winds sticking with us throughout the course of the next 24 hours. That's great. That's going to keep the humidity down as much as we can get it. Check out highs for tomorrow afternoon. Even with the grab bag of sunshine and clouds, highs are going to be into the lower 80s uh, heads only. Up, D07 Still about 5 has degrees below to average Nat for this time of the year. A uh, beautiful start to an August week. Tomorrow's Sunset okay. UV Index forecast number sponsored by the so Spain we'll Casey Dermatology and Jiffy Loop, a division of MFA Oil, is a 9. I'm expecting to see these UV Index numbers go just a little bit higher in the next few days because it's going to be bright full. sunshine. Tuesday, Wednesday, and even heading into the beginning of Thursday. There you're seeing it Tuesday. I'm loving it. Looks like highs could be as cool Camera's as about clear. the 80 degree Same mark. Like Coolest spots into the upper 70s. And then even as we head closer to this next weekend, guys, this real first Stand chances of rain start to pick up late Thursday night, and then they're going to carry with us Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But it's uh, still looking like things are going to stay really mild until we get to about Saturday. And then 
oh no, we're going to have to go back to average. <laughs> it's into the upper 80s for this weekend. I, uh, I have a bone to pick. I, I understand. I know that I had to I, predict mostly cloudy skies I want tonight. to see the super moon. Super and moon, 30% brighter than your average full moon and 14% uh, larger. So if you can snap a picture of it tonight, <laughs> run out there, do your best, and uh, post it on our Facebook page. We'll try to use it at 10 o'clock tomorrow night. And All I'm right. sorry, Jim. All right. Thanks, Rosie. Sure. Thank you. And five. The belief that a computer can save a life was the motivation behind special events in package. East Baltimore package today. Runs the second 117. annual Computers for Guns initiative gave gun owners a chance to turn in their weapons in exchange for a computer. And as organizers explained, the event isn't just about guns, it's also about education. James Gorin's shotgun belonged to his father. For years now, he says it's just been sitting in his house, taking up space. Well, sitting in the corner, getting dusty, Super dusty. So I said, take it and see what... Get, get something out of it. Now he'll have the space for something he can really yeah. use, a computer, Pretty thanks to the Laptops for Gun event at McKeldry Park. Uh, this one right here is the Hewlett Packard. The program allows gun owners to exchange their weapons for a free laptop or tablet, no questions asked. And dozens of people lined up to take advantage. The goal is to not only take guns off the street, but to also provide computer TV, education TV, and training. Watching these computers, computers they generally the cost so like about $250 to about $1,000 on the internet. So you can have How? a $50 or $100 gun and get something that has more value. And you can only do a few things with a gun, right? Take life. You can do so much with the computer. The mayor's office on criminal justice, members of the McKeldry Park community, and the company Digital Systems teamed up for this second annual Computer for Guns initiative. A million dollar grant helped make it possible. We hear it all the time, you know, people want better, and we have to look for creative ways to partner with people who want better for their lives. James is more than happy to set an example. And Q6. Organizers and consider this year's Computers for Guns event a huge success. They say about 25 people turned in their guns and took home a brand new computer. And five. Patients across the nation say marijuana helps them live a better life. And is all but video. doctors are Stand telling one mother graphics. that her medicine may be a threat. Q. And your lottery numbers. Good luck. Music full. We'll bring you the latest on several road closings, so you have the information you need to plan your morning commute. And also, it looks like a lot of us are going to start to work back into the 80s over the next few days. We'll talk all about that tomorrow morning. From weather on the 8th to news as it happens, as part of our new and now segment, we bring you the stories to start your day every weekday starting at 4.30 in the morning. We'll see you then. And it's all break. We are now 32. I'm sorry? 32 seconds heavy. 32 seconds heavy. And stand, oh, stand by. Up, Q Jim. A Portland, Oregon mom says doctors told her she can't breastfeed her new baby because she uses medical marijuana. Doctors say they can't stop her from smoking pot, but they want her to know the dangers. Bob High reports. And package in. Package Crystal runs Kane minute have been 45. Happier when she delivered her little girl, Charisma, at OHSU Wednesday, even though she delivered eight weeks premature and the baby needed an incubator to survive. She's going to be okay. They said um, they took Super her off of all her, her breathing machines um, yesterday and they gave her a trial run. They said she's doing absolutely fine. Knowing how important breast milk is to a baby's immune system, Crystal planned on breastfeeding until... They're refusing to allow me to breastfeed. Crystal is a medical marijuana card holder. She'd been smoking marijuana during her pregnancy on her midwife's advice, Crystal says, for anxiety and nausea. She isn't worried about THC, the compound in marijuana that gets you high, in her bloodstream or breast milk. There's several studies that indicate um, it doesn't, it can't transfer through your milk ducts. It, your, your body automatically kind of filters it. But the American Academy of Pediatrics advises against it. OHSU decided on a middle ground. We had the mom sign Super a zoom. waiver acknowledging the use of marijuana and the package runs about 30 seconds the more. hospital says it's like warning we'll a new mom four. against smoking or drinking alcohol during pregnancy we do understand the benefits of mother's milk uh, we also don't want to be uh, caught in a situation where a uh, mother continues to use and then says that we never gave uh, her information on it, uh, never, never informed about the risks, and so it's really a, a way of documenting that the parents acknowledge the risks 
and we we can't stop her from using it. I'm saying there's not enough Stand by information four. because nobody tests it. It's such a touchy subject that nobody wants to mess with it. And Q4. A Minnesota Vikings player was among nine people heard in a nightclub shooting in Minneapolis. Witnesses say a man video opened this, fire with a in. handgun inside the club just before closing time. Two people are in serious but stable condition. The other seven received minor injuries. Vikings defensive tackle Linville Joseph was grazed in the calf and released from a hospital. Police say the Same shooting is being related. They believe just one person was the intended target. BO's one in. person is dead. Another injured after a shooting and a standoff at a New Orleans Super. hotel this morning. Police responded to Same reports of shots fired in a room on the 17th floor. A SWAT team was called in after three hours of negotiations. Authorities heard a single gunshot. They broke through the door and found two people inside. One was pronounced dead. The second person had gunshot wounds and was taken to the hospital. YPO, a 10-year-old girl is recovering from a shark bite off the central Florida coast. It happened yesterday at Cocoa Beach, Brevard County Ocean Rescue. Says the girl was wading in knee-deep water when she was bitten on the right foot. Bystanders heard her scream and helped her to shore. Q6. In your world news, a weekend typhoon Same bit of slammed it into Japan today, leaving one person dead and more than 30 others injured. Wipe. Tropical storm Heilong slowed down Blue as it moved two by falls in Japan. It forced more than a million people to this evacuate across the country sorry, and Sabio, disrupted land and Nabio. air traffic. The Japanese Meteorological the Agency issued Nap the Hopper highest runs. alert for heavy rain in central Japan, prompting more than half a million About residents there to move away from swollen rivers. And Sabio's in. And Q. The fighting between Israel and Hamas got a little too close to a, to a CNN crew earlier today. An airstrike sent CNN correspondent Martin Savage diving to the floor. The building targeted was about 200 meters from the CNN bureau in Gaza City. Savage reports first hearing a knock on the YPO roof, then followed Lawrence by Mike. the explosion. Israel and Hamas agreed to another 72-hour ceasefire proposed by Egypt today, according to officials from both sides. It was expected to go into effect at midnight local time. YPO. A JetBlue flight departing from Puerto Rico was evacuated last night Blue after Super, one of the engines four caught for fire. The plane was headed for New York's JFK airport. A Puerto Rico airport official said that 186 passengers on board the plane were evacuated after the pilot stopped the aircraft before it could take off. He added that three people suffered major, minor injuries due to the emergency evacuation. The FAA, FAA is investigating the cause of the fire. Q4. A marriage proposal gone wrong before it even happened. Up next, a story from Saw Florida video. that Stand by might sports have a happy season. ending. And Q. The cards gave the Aerials a taste of their own medicine today. See how the long ball made the difference for the Redbirds and Sports Extra. Break is in. We are 20 seconds heavy. 20 seconds heavy. Four spins to RPS. 10 seconds out. Cold in the control room. Five out. And up cue. After an expensive mishap, a Florida couple is celebrating their engagement with a brand new ring thanks to Same a local jeweler's generosity. Corey Todd met his girlfriend Jacqueline Penton in middle school. Two months ago, Todd bought an engagement ring and hid it in a pair of pants. But then his girlfriend accidentally donated them to uh -oh. Goodwill. Oh, no. As uh -oh. the story, their failed engagement spread, a local Oops. store decided to step in and donate the ring. Corey had his take two proposal this weekend. The couple plans Stand to set five. a wedding date for September of next year. Five. That's really sweet. I'm glad that they were able to be helped out. Let's talk one more time about what we're expecting with your weather for the rest of tonight and heading into the beginning of your next work week. Mostly cloudy skies expected. We are going to have some patchy cloud cover throughout the day on Monday. Our best chance of rain really happening in the next couple of hours. Other than that, we might get a little bit of spotty redevelopment for our eastern counties specifically Same tomorrow afternoon. Four. Otherwise, look at those I'm highs. Sorry, Lower middle 80s. That's all we're going to see this week. And we even have the potential for Tuesday to be topping out at 79 mm. degrees. Not a bad forecast, no. I don't think. Mm. Absolutely. You, <laughs> you know what it's time for. He's actually back this week. Can you believe it? It's time for Sports Extra with Chris Gervino. Who was that pinch hitter last <laughs> week? <laughs> he was hey, terrible. And you can see it in HD. <laughs> and the break. Standby Sports Open. And we are up. Open. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi everyone, welcome to Sports Extra with Chris Gervino. I'm Chris, glad you are with us tonight. Hope you've had a wonderful Chris, weekend. In. And folks, the football season is rapidly approaching. Today on Faro Field, Mizzou Fan Day, thousands of Tiger fans gathered to get autographs and or pictures with head coach Gary Pinkle and their favorite Tiger players. Mizzou will kick off its new season two weeks from Saturday against South Dakota State at Faro Field. That's in. I love it. I like getting signed by the players. And I have my own t-shirt. We are definitely looking forward to Maddie Mock. So. These quarterbacks always seem to be popular, huh? I'm telling you, they are, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> you get to meet the people who made this exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just, it's great to be able to be around them and say, you know, these are the guys that, they're, they're the reason why we're here. Yeah, it's great for uh, my in. players, because my players, uh, players, they get to get up close and personal with the fans. And it's great for the Mizzou fans. I'm very appreciative of them, you know, loving this place so much that uh, you know, we have thousands of people here. It's just a really, really fun day. Thank you, Chris. That's right, and a sure sign the season See is just video. about here. The Cardinals, meanwhile, hope to avoid a sweep in Baltimore today. Baltimore skipper Buck Showalter's team had really Please. belted the cards the first couple days. Different story today, though, although Baltimore threatened early with the bases loaded, but Lance Lynn gets out of a jam in the third inning, preserves a Cardinal 3-1 lead. Six hitting, it's 3-2, and Daniel Descalso singles home John Jay. Birds of St. Louis up 4-2. Six hitting, Orioles responding. Marquecas singles to drive and a run. It's a one-run ball game, 4-3 in favor of the Cards. In the eighth inning, though, Cards grab a run back. Matt Carpenter with a ground rule double to we'll allow Descalso to score. And then in the ninth, the Redbirds put it away. Peter Borges spatting, and he will hammer one over the wall and right. A three-run home run. The Cardinals had a season-high 17 hits. 14 of them were singles. There's Super a big zen. blow, though, a three-run blast, and the Cards win it 8-3. How about those red-hot Kansas City Royals on classic car day at the Kauffman Stadium? But forget the cars. They're actually coming to watch these Royals play because they have been on fire. Alex Gordon caps off a four-run first inning with a two-run blast, his 12th home run of the year. Then in the fourth, Salvador Perez delivers a long shot into the left field seat. 7-1, Kansas City just putting it to the San Francisco Giants this week in the Kauffman Stadium. Hunter Pence in the seventh inning here, singles to drive home a run to make it 7-4. The Giants did make it interesting with the bases loaded in the ninth, but Greg Holland gets the save. How about these Royals? They win it 7-4. They've won seven games in a row, nine of their last ten. Folks, they are just a half game behind Detroit for the division lead. Wow. Four is in. And tragedy in NASCAR. NASCAR star Tony Stewart raced in a dirt track event Saturday night in upstate New York. Stewart's car struck and killed another driver, 20-year-old Kevin Ward Jr., who was walking on the track trying to confront Stewart after their cars had collided. An investigation into the accident is ongoing, but there is no evidence to support video. criminal charges at this time. Stewart did not drive in today's Sprint Cup race at Watkins Glen, New York. Video's Moments in. before that race, Regan Smith arrived. He replaced Tony Stewart in the lineup today. Jeff Gordon led for the opening 29 laps, was in second place when uh, his car lost power and needed a little help to get to the pit road. He finished in 34th place. 35 laps to go, Greg Biffin, and and Ryan Newman in trouble in turn six. Newman spun hard into the guardrail as you take another look at it. Wow, Biffle and Newman there in some trouble to say the least. It was quite a mess. 75 minute red flag to clean it all up. They did get going. Lap number 59, the Marcus Ambrose stole in his car, leaving the pit, but he would recover. Part of several pit issues for many drivers today. Yeah, one of those days for some of these guys and their crews. Two laps to go though, Ambrose and A.J. Allmendinger trading paint down the stretch, but Allmendinger pulls away to take the checkered flag, followed Super by sad. Ambrose. Columbia's Carl Edwards finished in fifth place today. He Same is in four. sixth in the overall point standings. Four. The final round of the year's final major today, the PGA Championship, and Rory McIlroy looking to continue his winning ways. He has in. This is the one to make your trophy. It's a big Louis piece Super. of hardware. It's what they were playing for today at Valhalla and Louisville. Ricky Fowler, former Oklahoma State Cowboy, long birdie attempt 
And can you believe that? He makes it to move to 15 under par, sole possessor lead. Fowler had finished in the top five in the previous three majors. He would do so again in the fourth of the year today. Phil Mickelson, a veteran lefty, drains a long putt. 15 under, tied for the lead. He was making a run at another major. But look at this clutch birdie putt from Rory McIlroy. He goes two shots ahead of Mickelson and Fowler. Look how dark it got. They tried to finish this today, and they would just barely. 18th hole, Mickelson with a long try for an eagle. He just missed, did get a birdie, but McIlroy able to close it out. How about Rory McIlroy gets his fourth major victory, his four. second in a row. He's won his third consecutive tournament, and he is just in outstanding form with another victory today. Four. And speaking of golf, tomorrow in Columbia, it will be the 24th annual Rainbow House Golf Classic at the Country Club of Missouri. Seen by so golfers gather at CCMO to raise money for the Rainbow House, Columbia's home for abused and neglected children. The headliner pro this year, PGA Tour veteran Ken Duke. He has played in the Rainbow House Classic several times, and last year he won the Travelers Championship on the PGA Tour. So that's in. Just shows all the hard work I've done over well, the you know, 20 the years. It's my 20th year playing, and package. Uh, it just caps it all off. Uh, it's it's just been special to me, and obviously, like you said, a lot of people kind of knows my name a little bit more now, which is which is the cool thing, I guess. But I got I got reamed a little bit up there in uh, the the Connecticut area because you know my name is Duke, and that's Yukon country. So they usually never you know yell the word Duke up there. And is all set. Well, joining us now is the publisher of the popular Pigskin Preview magazine, Tim Burke, the former Missouri Tiger defensive lineman, is here. Uh, Tim, your arrival is always a sign of the times. That football Four season is here. Up. Your arrival means the arrival of those wonderful South half of magazines. Set is clear. And here we go again. 16th annual Pigskin 16th Preview. 16th annual, absolutely. Got it hot off the press today. We're ready to roll out this week. I have uh, emails and phone calls galore. They start in July from uh, many uh, fans asking about when the magazine is going to be out, mm -hmm. when they can get it, where they can get it. Uh, we'll get to all that certainly tonight. But first of all, just a little bit uh, overview, if you will, about the magazine, what all is included, because it, it keeps getting bigger and yeah, better. Bigger and bigger. bigger. Biggest year we've ever had. We're adding three Super more thin. schools this year, obviously. Obviously, Battle uh, High School right here in Columbia is going to be starting up. Uh, they're going to be playing in districts and everything, full schedule this mm -hmm. year. Um, second year in existence and hitting the road uh, running right away. Yeah. Uh, Harrisburg, just north of Columbia here, starting up football. I'm ha glad to see them aboard. And uh, Lincoln High School starting back up varsity football as well. Boy, you cover a lot of schools and, um, of course, far too many to, to <laughs> mention, unfortunately, in our short time. But mm -hmm. uh, some marquee uh, talent right here in mid-Missouri. Uh, Alex Afale, the receiver at Rockland, headed to Oregon. Hale Hench is the tight end. Elias headed to Alabama. M Mizzou missed out on, on both of those kids. The Tigers do get a great recruit and quarterback, Drew Lock of Lee Summit, who will be in Columbia visiting Hickman mm -hmm. in just a couple weeks' time. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, this year was spectacular as far as talent-wise. We had 22 nominees for the front cover. Mm. Probably the most talent-laden year we've ever had, all seniors. Um, we had to narrow it down, and we got some of the best, obviously, with uh, Hentage and Afadale leading the list. Obviously, those are probably the top guys, and you always still hold out hope that things change. Uh, you never know what happens throughout the recruiting process and even throughout the fall. Mm -hmm. So you kind of hope that things fall your way, but uh, there's certainly some great talent, uh, right? Battle, Hickman, uh, down to Jeff City. Jeff City's loaded again, too. So is Elias. They got not just Hentage. They have a few other guys as well. Yeah, so. they sure do. And, of course, you played this game at a high Cheryl level in high please. school at CBC, then came to Mizzou. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the popularity of high school football. Is mm -hmm. now, I mean, games mm -hmm. on national TV. Right. Yeah, Elias kicking off at Nixa. Mm -hmm. Less than 30 ESPNU. seconds of video that remaining. That's kind of a sign of the times as well. I mean, people love it at the grassroots level. All right, well. Know? Listen, stay with us, if you will, a few minutes. We'll get into specifics about social media. teams and the important information about how folks can get your magazine, okay? You got it. Very good. Thank you. Social media. my break. And dissolve break. 
We are 38 seconds light. 38 seconds light. Chris moves to weather pod. Stand by. Up cue, Chris. Welcome back, everyone, to Sports Blue Extra Super. with Chris Trevino. There is a new yet familiar face on the Missouri football coaching staff. Side. A.J. Ricker, a former two-time captain for the Tigers, has taken over as offensive line coach. KOMU 8's Mahir Bagat introduces us to Coach Ricker and tells how he's getting adjusted to this team. Package in. Hey! Package hey! in a minute 20. Oh, there we go. Who's up? Who's up? Let's go. Let's go. It was a dream job for Coach A.J. Ricker. I was ecstatic, and uh, I still am today. You know, I'm, I'm still pinching myself. Is this really real? But it wasn't a dream situation for the Mizzou football team. Very unusual situation to be looking Super's for in. Um, Out. a coach in July. So, uh, spend half my vacation looking for coaches. But I think it's a tough start I mean, in. coming in two weeks before. Out. You don't go through spring ball and you come in two weeks right before camp starts. You know, obviously there's some, there's some catch up to do there. But Coach Henson has helped Coach Ricker catch up. You know, he's kind of told me the ins and outs of this place. You know, it's been a while since I've been here. So he's kind of taken me under his wing and done that job. I haven't taught him anything. <laughs> he's good. Like Henson, Ricker can be a jokester too. Maybe that comes with being a young coach. Ricker is only 34 years old, which is helping him bond with the players. He's just an awesome dude. I mean, you know, I don't know if it's professional to call my coach a dude, but he's a, I mean, he's a great guy. And he brings such an intensity and such a passion for the game. We're going to give him look alike in the offensive line room. We're going to give him the joke list, and he said he wants to go last on that. so. We got a lot of build up for him. It's going to be a good time. And he's going to get it on the stand by. Uh, we're going to try, but right now I don't think next. he's got enough hair. Dissolve. Once again, Tim Burke of Pigskin Preview Magazine is here. His magazine will be available this week. Uh, Tim, we talked about the high school level in our last segment, but I want to mention you also do a thorough job on the Missouri Tigers and the SEC mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. Act. We cover uh, just all bases just because it's Super so popular. Uh, obviously, Missouri's oh. riding high after last year. And uh, we're not jumping on a bandwagon, but I'm expecting good things as well. I like Gary Pinkle's sophomore quarterback years, to be honest with you. And so we stayed positive this year. There's going to be a lot of new faces, but, uh, but I love this whole uh, – it started with the SEC. We really decided to make that leap and make even bigger coverage of it. And we do seven pages of coverage, and we cover it very thoroughly. So. Yeah, you sure do. And then, of course, uh, a lot of the other area colleges as well uh, mm -hmm. throughout central Missouri. Well, tell us about how and where folks can get – the pigskin preview. The easiest way to go to, go to midmopigskin.com, midmopigskin.com, and you can click on your town. It'll say where to get one. Click on that. You just click on your city and town, and it'll have all the different uh, places you can pick them up at. It's over 460 locations mid-Missouri wide. So there's going to be uh, uh, 22,000 copies out on the shelves there. And they're out this week, right? I mean, should Absolutely. be available pretty much all the spots by the end of the week. Left. Yeah, by the end of the week. We should have them in everybody's hands by Friday. We have That's a limited goal. edition here, and I say that simply mm -hmm. because they go so fast. Mm -hmm. We get folks showing up the station, which is fine, mm -hmm. but I, I hate to see them come by and they're already mm -hmm. gone. So <laughs> the best way, folks, is to log on midmopigskin.com and uh, find out where they are available in your hometown. Because there'll be plenty of copies available uh, free of charge, by the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just pick them up. Anybody who uh, helps support the magazine gets to hand them out in their local community. Seconds. And that's what really drives it. Well, you've done a, a bang-up job. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the best-looking cover yet. I really mean that. Yeah, it really came out nice. I'm very happy with it. Like I said, we had a lot to work with. So. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, Tim, congratulations. A job well done. I know you Thank folks you. will enjoy it. Best of luck this season. I appreciate it, Chris. All right. That's Thank Tim you. Burke, the mm -hmm. former Tiger, now the publisher of the popular Pigskin Preview in its 16th year. It's time now for tonight's trivia. Trivia. by social media. PC in. Ready to go to break? Break. We are 
25 seconds light. 25 seconds light. Stand by. Up cue. Welcome back, everyone, to Sports Extra with Chris Trevino. It is time now to answer tonight's Sports Extra sports trivia question. Earlier Graphic in our in. program, we asked you who was the last golfer to win back-to-back -back majors before Rory McIlroy accomplished it just today. Did you know the answer? Well, here it is. Patrick Harrington back in 2008. But how about the run? Five Rory McIlroy is on. He has won the last three tournaments he's played including two majors, the British Open last month, and now today capping off a win at the Valhalla in Louisville, Kentucky with the PGA Championship. Golf, by the way, on display tomorrow with the uh, 24th annual Rainbow House Golf Classic out at the Country Club of Missouri. Many pros on hand, including Ken Duke, a PGA Tour winner just last year. He won the Travelers up in Connecticut. It's a big day, always has been now, for nearly a quarter of a century. Youth skills challenge okay, in the uh, ready, youth clinic, out. rather, in the morning at 7.30, then the Pro-Am followed by the Pro Skills Challenge early in the afternoon. All the fun starts about 7.30 at CCMO AM and will be over with by about 2, 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. Coverage of that and continuing coverage of the zoo preseason football practice as well. We'll see you here again tomorrow night at 6 and 10. Thank you so much for watching, folks. We appreciate your time and viewership. We'll see you tomorrow night. And video's in. Camera's moving home. Slammer in.